hard to hear. And I've, I've got a soft voice. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to read uh, six poems from uh, a book that will be out in February. It's called Useless Landscape or a Guide for Boys. This is entitled Lessons in Woodworking. I'm in the clearing now. He is my master carpenter, and I his joiner. We're putting up a front. We reckon it's the front of a house, and that we'll live herein. The raccoons haven't micturated yet upon the beams. The pallet bats have not deported us back to the hot garage. We've got our tree house to erect. Pass me that piece there, he says, although he leans across to grab the block himself and where his arm just skims the knot that is my shoulder, I come undone a moment, spilling tacks, and there's a hammer in my pocket, so uncomfortable, I have to pull it out and drop it in the grass. I will forget it there, it's going to rust. He'll take on more apprentices. I'll never learn to make a miter joint. For one thing, I'm just messy with the glue. <laughs> and though I pound the damned things down, my boards come loose. My hinges stick. My only saving grace, I am discreet. This time, I'll meet him by the twilight wood. I'll lift the rafters up, just let him pound. Are they playing The Devil Went Down to Georgia back then? <laughs> this is, uh, it's, part of the book is a guide for boys, obviously. And uh, part of it is um, a series of landscapes. I was trying to make um, landscapes in the way that 19th century painters would make landscapes. This is called Landscape with Combine. My father's fields are far from here. I shot my share of blackbirds there, drove a harvester in summer, gathered plums, gathered chums. The tractor trailer rigs would come the pickers, singularly, or in bands. And in summer, the canneries began. If I was asked to ride the John Deere then, to reap, I'd reap, to thresh, I'd thresh. Men, I'd winnow you, I'd winnow a few. I'd take you, dear John, or whoever is you. Love is easier to achieve than you might think. Sooner or later, the combine gives out. And sooner. OK, now we got some Michael Jackson going. <laughs> and he's saying, don't stop till you get enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is called chicken. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Only dirty. Give it to me, baby. Sorry, Tish. Chicken. The metallic taste I got from being served upon a tray in the Sac County Jail or bumped against the dented cans at the dented can warehouse. The stale scent, the elbow scrapes. I was a billiard ball for those who cared to knock me in the pockets, on the table, in the rec room, after hours. It wasn't only Amtrak pulling trains each night. Each man who lost his stake in me had lost his game cock, his bathhouse boy chick, the pullet at the pump house, the tipsy one, free living. The cues were often skewed. When simple coxcombs preened, I wasn't squeamish on their knees, as, without means, I groomed their inch-long waddles. 
I'm getting on in years. I'm past my freshness date. If I have balked at play, it's that this chicken tastes no more like table fowl. I blame the microwaves. <laughs> you blame the chemicals and drugs. Yes, I'm a little overdone. I'll warrant you. You want a little cut? Get in here then. Pull back the skin and crisp it before the insatiate drunks come round with greasy fingers. Distribute me between the bars and pinch my biscuits. <laughs> This book, uh, this uh, uh, poem, it comes later in the book. It's um, uh, because I was doing a lot of, of work um, describing landscapes in the Central Valley of California. I had to begin to grapple with what it means to be an artist going back to a place that you feel exiled from. Um, and I was also reading a book on the history of the paint box, um, the colors that artists use in, um, in uh, beginning with the Impressionists. You know, ready-made colors were sort of a new thing, being able to actually go out into the world and paint rather than sketching it and then taking it back to the studio to create. So um, this is my attempt to write en plein air, uh, out in the field, it's called Tender Mercies. The dandelions, ditch-blown brood, the evening snow and dew-soaked flocks, the brewer's pea, the jepson's pea, these the bright eyes of the viridian fields, in chaparral the hillside pea and angled pea, intensities of light and pomp that distress the easy upswept grass. The smack the rain plants as it smudges past and penetrates the canvas. The smattering on field and railroad tracks, both hardy blooms and dainty flowers, the judge's house, the chicken farm, a migratory camp, a flesh motel, a stucco digs where all that mitigates the August swelter is the swamp cooler's immutable burr, a straggling house that draws its water from a hard water well and flushes out with the help of a crude sump pump. Before the flat land is occluded by the staunch of light at end of day, I wanted to be content with all its surfaces. Weed, barb, crack, rill, rise. But every candid shoot and fulgent branch depends upon the arteries beneath. The houses have their siphons and their circuit fence. The heart, I mean the literal heart, must rely upon its own plaque valves. The duodenal canal, its unremitting grumble, the brain upon its stem, and underneath a network vast of nerves that rationalize. The earth's a little harder than it was, but I expect that it will soften soon, voluptuous in some age hence, because we captured it as art the moment it was most itself, fragile, flecked with nimble weed, and so alone it almost welcomed its own ravishment. I was a maiden in this versicolor plain. I watched it change, withstood the change, the infidelities of light, the solar interval, the shift of time, the shift from farm to town. I had a man that pressed me down into the soil. I was that man. I was that town. They call the sailors they call the chicory ragged sailors here, sojourners who have finally returned and are content to see the summer to its end. Be unafraid of what the future brings. I will not use that particular blue again.
Uh, this is a, a recent poem, um, very recent. Uh, um, it, it, sometimes things gestate for a long period, and you don't quite know how they're going to fall into place. I went to see an organ recital uh, while I was, um, I, I spent this past semester in um, Davidson, North Carolina, as a visiting writer there. And um, there was this uh, marvelous piece uh, by Messiaen entitled um, The Mass for Pentecost. And in the, the song cycle, there's one piece um, entitled uh, Small Song for um, Birds and Waters. And the organist plays uh, with the left hand, the sound of gurgling, the sound of water, and with the right hand he plays um, the sounds of birds. And it's an amazing piece of music. And I thought, oh, I wish poetry could do something like that. It's tough. I mean, we barely have one hand sometimes. <laughs> um, and so I was, I was thinking about this piece of music, and I started thinking about the story of St. Francis of Assisi, our patron saint here in San Francisco, um, who apparently, and I didn't know this part of the legend, you know you always see him with, uh, as a statue with birds hanging off of him. Um, but apparently he ministered to the birds at one time. He said to the birds, you neither reap nor sow, and yet you, um, you get all of the benefit of God's grace. You have dominion over the greatest of his creations, the air, and you don't celebrate God's splendor. And so the birds began to sing, and they flew off in the four cardinal directions. Um, so this is my reinvention of Messiaen and St. Francis. It's entitled, Mass for Pentecost, Canticle for Birds and Waters. There is no cause to grieve among the living or the dead, so long as there is music in the air. And where the water and the air divide, I'll take you there. The levee aureate with yellow thistles, white moth, wasp, and dragonfly. We could not wish unless it were on wings. Give us our means and point us toward the sun. Will the spirit come to us now in the pewter paten of the air, the fluted call of dabbler drakes, the deadpan honk of the white-fronted goose, the tule goose? Tongues confused in the matchstick rushes, high, high the bald pate cries, and in the air, and in the air, the red-winged blackbirds chase the damselflies. Triumph over death with me, and we'll divide the air. 